have already seen that foregut, midgut, hindgut or developed from the primitive gut which is from the endoderm. So the upper part of the foregut that is the pharyngeal part of the foregut presents a funnel shaped expansion which possess dorsal wall, ventral wall and two lateral walls. You already know the ventral wall is formed craniocaudally by ectodermal stomodium. Then you have a bulge called pericardial bulge with pericardial cavity and developing heart. Then below that we have septum transversum which gives rise to liver and diaphragm. So this is about the ventral wall. Dorsally we know there is notochord, hindbrain vesicles. You also have pair of dorsal iota. And laterally we have splanchnic mesoderm on both the sides. So each bronchial arch consists of an outer covering of surface ectoderm, central core of the mesoderm, inner lining of pharyngeal endoderm. So in the interval between the arches, ectoderm and the endodermal layers are closely approximated to form closing membranes. So the bronchial arches are six cylindrical bores which contain skeletal elements, arteries, nerves and muscles. Let's talk about the skeletal elements. So just remember the skeletal elements of bronchial arches are derived from the neural crust cells of midbrain and hindbrain. Now moving on to the first arch that is mandibular arch. The cartilaginous bore of the mandibular part which extends dorsally up to the cartilaginous ear capsule. So the dorsal part of the cartilage is ossified to form two ear ossicles they are malleus and incus. The succeeding part of the cartilage that is between the ear ossicle and the ventral part it regresses to form fibrous envelope which persists as anterior ligament of malleus and spinomandibular ligament. The spinomandibular extends from the spine of spinoid to the lingulo of mandible. Next the second arch. Similarly, the cartilaginous bore of this second arch extends dorsally up to the cartilaginous ear capsule. So this forms one ear ossicle that is tapes and the succeeding part forms the styloid process of temporal bone and again the part which regresses to form the fibrous part that is stylohyoid ligament and the ventral part is converted into lesser corno and upper part of the hyoid bone. Moving on to the third arch, dorsal part of this arch disappears. Only the ventral part ossifies to form greater corno and lower part of the body of hyoid bone. Again the 4th arch, 6th arch, the dorsal part disappears, ventral part forms the lamina of thyroid cartilage from the 4th arch and cricoid and retinoid cartilage are formed from the 6th arch. 5th arch is transitory and presents no practical significance. So what is the name of 1st arch? It is called Meckel's cartilage and the second arch is hyoid that is Richard's cartilage. Let's talk about the nerves. So the nerves of the bronchial arches they are derived from the hindbrain vesicle. So here is the brain with the hindbrain vesicle.
so the nerves from the hind brain vesicle appears at the bronchial cleft this cleft is otherwise called trema when the nerve reaches this trema it divides into pre traumatic and post traumatic branches so you can see the nerve which divides into pre traumatic and post traumatic this pre traumatic nerve accompanies the caudal border of the preceding arch post traumatic nerve follows the cephalic border of the succeeding arch let me explain in detail so for example this is the bronchial arches first second third fourth so what is the first arch nerve that is mandibular nerve okay that nerve is given to the proper bronchial arch so that is the post traumatic nerve it is said that all the pre traumatic nerves disappears so only the post traumatic nerve persists so that is mandibular nerve which is post traumatic nerve of the first arch second nerve is the facial nerve you can see at the tree my divides into two branches your pre traumatic nerve is called cauda tympani which goes to the first arch and the second post traumatic that is proper facial nerve comes to the second arch similarly third nerve glossopharyngeal the pre traumatic branch will be tympanic branch the proper nerve comes to the third arch vagus auricular branch of the vagus most towards the previous arch here you can see the nerves coming from the hindbrain vesicles just remember uh, tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal is called jacobson's nerve and the auricular branch of vagus is called arnold's nerve let's talk about muscles and arteries in the next video thank you